just a few comments about this piece. Um, you can get the sheet music and tab, of course, um, sheet music only edition or sheet music and tab, everything that you need, just follow the link under the video. But um, there's a couple of things to talk about. This is a great intermediate level tremolo piece, um, a great piece to kind of approach before you take on uh, some bigger pieces, maybe by Torrega or Barrios. So um, very nice little tremolo piece, small in size, very manageable, a uh, few breaks in it as well, which is really nice. So this is the arrangement by Domingo Pratt, and that he arranged it into a kind of like a three note tremolo or four note tremolo, including the thumb um, arrangement, which the original is not, but this has kind of become the standard um, arrangement for this piece. So a couple of comments. I've generally followed the Pratt arrangement. Um, the only things that I've changed are a couple fingerings at the beginning. So in the original, the opening, the, um, both Vinyas and Pratt, they go all the way up the neck on the fifth and the second string. Once they get to that C, they play the D sharp there and the E and then go all the way up to the G. It's pretty noisy, like you can lift your third finger, but if you do that gliss, you're gonna get lots of noise on the modern guitar. So I've kind of chosen to keep it in first position for two reasons. One, just for ease, but also you end up there which is the following, which is the right place for the following chord that comes afterwards. So your sustain can connect really, really nicely. I admit though, it's a little bit less romantic sounding, um, but nevertheless, that's the way I've decided to finger it. So just first position. I mute the sixth string there for to get rid of some resonance. I do this list though. So just remember, you don't actually strike that top D. Some people might. That's more it's written. But it's kind of elegant to just... to just let it sound a little bit more casual. Um, but if you choose, you can strike the top note after arriving there. And then the next section, same thing. I don't go up the second string. I stop there, so you can hold on to that note and connect to the next chord. So again, you lose some of like the um, going up the neck um, kind of romantic sound, but you end up with a kind of a clean and simple um, arrival. very nicely. Those chords there, they're a little bit tricky to navigate. When you go from this chord, keep the third finger down. It's only one finger that you get to keep down, but it, it'll help a little bit. So I highly recommend that you do that. Um, there's a diminuendo and a writ, so as long as you combine your musicality with your technique there, it you don't, doesn't have to be that difficult. So you just do your writ in incremental stages, and then the chord changes aren't that hard. Now, into the tremolo part. Um, I have other videos on tremolo technique, so I've I'll put a link to that underneath the video, so check those out because um, we don't really have time to go over all of tremolo technique. But um, one thing I will say here is that you want to focus on that upper melody. So the upper notes that are repeated, that's the melody. If I played it without tremolo, you'd hear the melody on its own. simplify it further by just going like E. Um, so that's your melody. Now you're going to be repeating those notes. 
But that melody, that's what you want to come out of the texture the most. So really play that melody on its own without tremolo te technique first. I think that will allow you to um, stay focused on the important musical aspects without getting bogged down with tremolo. Tremolo is a difficult technique and it has to be practiced, but, um, and like I said, watch the other videos that I have on tremolo, but um, you have to know the melody really clearly in order to play this piece well. Um, another part that I changed from the Pratt arrangement um, and the original is bar 16. So instead of going up the neck, I think they go, you know, a very romantic gesture up the neck. I keep it very simple because I want to hold that note right until the repeat starts again. So I changed those two areas, just a couple of fingerings in the intro and that first ending there. Besides that though, the rest of the piece I've kept exactly the same as, as the original. Um, let's just do a, a little walkthrough of the tremolo section. Um, like I said, um, work on that tremolo. One thing I found really useful is practicing it in triplets with P and A together. Practicing like that just brings these two fingers closer together and kind of in muscle memory. Um, I find that really helpful because sometimes those fingers, that's where the gap is in my tremolo. But depending on where the gap is in yours, you can practice the piece in different ways. I usually put the metronome on. Um, I'll often go like thumb and M. And then add one other finger. Or the opposite P, M, I. Oh, sorry. Put them all together but kind of have like an a equilibrium between the thumb and the middle finger and then you can just think kind of more just 16th notes nevertheless let's go through this i'll just go slow pretty straightforward just letting everything sustain right i close the b here so you can play the d as well you just have to learn some of the chord shapes, right? And then play the tremolo. I close the B here. That way the third finger can move down. There's other ways to play that, but that's how I've chosen to do it. Um, on to the second page. You know, the left hand requirements of this piece are pretty minimal. They're like grade four level kind of playing. But with the tremolo included, it's, um, it's just a little bit more difficult. So I've, I've placed it at around grade seven level. Um, but the left hand requirements are very minimal. You just have to work on your tremolo, right? Because it's mostly first position stuff. It is tricky though. sharp here. It's a little bit awkward, but it's kind of the only reasonable way of doing it. And then a, I would bar all six strings here. That way when you go down to third position, you're already on all six strings. That F there. No trick here, you just have to jump down to C. If you roll the C, it gives you a little bit of extra time. But like I said, make sure if you're going from the fifth fret, but you're not barring all the strings, 
You're gonna have to do a, quite a jump as, as opposed to just sliding the finger down. So I'd recommend doing, barring all six strings uh, at the fifth fret, even though you're not using them, right? Uh, that way you can just move straight down. And then on to the second ending. about the extended cadence harmonics at the 12th fret I just use my pinky finger and then you're done so like I said um, the main thing that you need to work on is the, probably the tremolo the in terms of the piece it's pretty straightforward there's not much to talk about which is great it's a it's a great opportunity for intermediate players to play a like a full-scale tremolo work not just like a little student piece but like a full-scale tremolo piece but without too many left-hand difficulties and then you can just focus on your on your tremolo technique so watch that other video on tips on how to play tremolo uh, from my technique book and uh, the video is free to watch so get some tips on playing tremolo from that and then just apply it to this piece and I hope you enjoy